Hi everyone, thanks so much for coming. If you don't know me already, my name is Hannah, also known as Tropical Plant Addict on social media. I create content on caring for tropical plants, a bit of exotic gardening, houseplant tours, unboxings, things like that. And I've been collecting tropical plants for about a year now. Although I've always had tropical plants in my home, but not quite to the extent of what I've got now. I think I've got about 100 plants at the moment, and obviously my collection's always growing. And um, I'm just so happy to be here and be out, being able to share my passion with everyone and the world. And I've met so many lovely people over the past year on social media through the lovely houseplant community. And I'm going to be planting up one of the wonderful biob airs for you today, um, take you step by step, talk about the plants. And then if you've got any questions, just feel free to ask. And yes. Excellent, thanks Anna. Uh, so my name's Sam, I'm one of the owners here at the Garden Society uh, and we have this pop-up shop here in West Quay currently. I'm also one of the designers from Biob as well, so I'm responsible for designing some of the products within the Biob range uh, and I'll also be um, scaping a Biob air today as well. So between myself and Hannah we'll be creating some different displays and yeah, answer any questions and um, hopefully you guys enjoy it. Okay, should we start? Yep, let's do it. I'm going to put my gloves on. So, I'm not sure if any of you guys are aware of this product, but this is kind of one of the world's first fully automated terrariums. So it was designed so that everything is um, inherent in the product, so it controls the humidity, the lighting, as if it would be in nature. And so it's quite a unique product, and obviously it's a very visual product as well. So it allows you to create your own kind of mini landscape, your own mini world. So Hannah's created a great one, and you can see it on her social media channels. Um, with all sorts of amazing plants. And what sort of things have you got growing in there? I've got some rare plants, including a begonia amphioxus, um, which is an unusual looking begonia. Very hard to grow, needs very high humidity, so the bio bear is perfect for growing that type of plant. I've tried growing one out of the bio bear and it wasn't successful, so I am so happy to see it thriving now. And also things like a calathea white fusion, which is another one that I just couldn't keep alive in my living room, even though the humidity is really good. It's about 60%. All my other calatheas are fine, but the white fusion just seems to be extra fussy, but it's perfectly fine in the bio bear. Um, what else have I got in there? Gosh, lots of things. Um, I've got um, some air plants, some different mosses, things like that. So I'll be planting up some for you today. So I'll go through each plant and a little bit about it. So when I'm uh, creating air, I try to uh, build like a mini landscape with the plants. So take a theme or an idea and try and build that up within the composition. So we use the decoration and also the plants to create like a mini world. So uh, whilst Hannah's uh, always works with very colourful and big and lots of interesting plants, I'm looking at kind of smaller details in the kind of scapes that I'm working on. So hopefully we'll create something quite different, although it looks like we picked out very similar colourways. Um, but yeah, so it'll be interesting to see what we come up with. All right, should we crack on? So um, just to talk you through the product, we have, um, there's like a capillary matting at the bottom and it has this quark compost which goes on top and there's a water reservoir at the bottom. So there's a mister in the top of the, um, the bio bear and that controls the whole humidity with a fan. So when we finish at the end, you'll see that it will fog and um, create the humidity in there so it's the perfect tropical environment for the plants. So the, the fun part now is to kind of create the skate, get some decor in there and get some plants in. So uh, we've already got the compost in. And uh, we shall just uh, hopefully Hannah can reach. Hello. Yeah. I've got a little stool here. Do you recommend taking off the top? Would it be easier? I think, for, yeah, do you want me to give your hand? Yeah, go on then. So do you, any of you guys have terrariums at home? Or, yeah, okay. And more kind of traditional style with layers of aggregate and carbon or? Um, no, it's just got soil. Really. It's just soil, okay. So do you find that you have any like fogging in things or? Yeah, it does. It? Okay. Okay, right, okay. Yeah, that's right, yeah, 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 coming in, yeah, yeah. yeah. So does it, it fogs up and yeah, then, yeah, okay. I think it was you who said just to take the lid off. Yeah, that's right, yeah, and then a little bit, a little bit of the humidity out, yeah. 
So the unique thing with this is obviously the fans inside stop it from fogging over. Yes, it comes as like um, a dried block and then you put it in a bucket with some water. And, but you haven't wet it now? It's already been pre, oh, pre-done, yeah. yeah. Otherwise, it's a bit messy. It doesn't look wet. Well. Yeah, you it's have to kind of moist. hydrate it. Yeah. yeah, slightly moist. You could also add a bit of um, charcoal in because that takes the toxins out of the soil if you like, but because it's got such good ventilation, it's not completely necessary with the biob. So do you have to use the special soil? Or do you use any soil? You could, I mean, it comes with this coil compost and this yeah. is really great, but if you want, you could add a little bit of activated charcoal in, a little bit of sphagnum moss, a bit of wood chips. It's all personal preference, really, and it depends what you're going to be keeping in the terrarium. And do you have to do anything to keep that soil on the storage? It's got a water tank at the bottom, a reservoir, so um, that keeps the humidity up and it also filters up through the mat into the soil so it keeps it moist so you hardly ever have to water. So when I'm doing these I don't like to see any soil line, so because we have this hidden skirt here on the product, uh, I always try and bank up the soil away from that. So when we come to finish that, I'll add some moss and things around here so you don't see that kind of visual soil line. And then using the decor in the middle, it kind of builds up this composition with the hardscape so that we can uh, get some levels in there where I'll be using mainly smaller plants. You see Hannah's kind of banked hers towards the back so that she has, you know, again, a different level so it adds perspective to the uh, scape. Uh, so any hardscape really, as long as it's been cleaned off, you can use rock or wood. We produce these um, from resin so that they, uh, they're inert, they don't affect the, the kind of environment inside the, the bio bear. Uh, but yeah, any kind of hardscape that you like to look off. So if you're trying to create a particular theme, you could use some woods or some roots, uh, rocks or pebbles, and just to kind of create a real natural effect. Or something completely, you know, uh, unnatural as well, can look really cool. Just put a blue star fern in mine at the back just to give it a bit of height at the back. Can you overfill them or do you just go to the I like a busy terrarium, <laughs> as you can probably see from my pictures if you looked on Instagram. I'm definitely not into the minimal look. So I have crammed in. This is it temperature that you have to I found actually that the LED lighting actually heats it up a little bit. I'm not quite sure of what the temperature is exactly in there, but when you put your arm in, you can actually feel that it's slightly warm. So that's really good for tropical plants. It might be interesting actually to put a thermometer in and see what the temperature is. Okay, so um, can you access the water reservoir? So there is this um, there is this drain on the side. So if you need to, um, you can. It's also like a water level indicator. Yeah. So you can see that when we fill it, you'll see on the side where the water level's at. So you can make sure you maintain the water level. Um, the product also comes with this kind of filtered water, so you get a scale build up. Um, so at the end, we'll put that in, and that'll kind of start our tank at the bottom. And then yeah, and you just monitor this level here. There's also this water tank at the top, which is the, the kind of mist of the fogging element, and that's the area you top up. The, the difference with this unit is when you need to top it up, the lights will flash, so you know. Mm. Um, so it's nice and easy to see. You don't have to worry about forgetting to do the work, because the product tells you what you need to do. You don't have to do much with it at all. It's very easy maintenance. I'm usually really bad with ferns as well around my house. The humidity is just not enough for them. But since they've been in here, they've been fine. So Hannah, that's quite a big fern. So would you maintenance wise get in there and nip off the bigger leaves as it gets a bit yeah. carried away? I mean, today I'm just gonna be planting it as it is, but if it was me at home, I would just maybe trim some of the bigger leaves off. And yeah, if it does, obviously start growing quickly, just prune it, or you can replace it with a smaller one, but just for the purposes of today. It looks quite nice at the back. 
it gives it a bit of height. Yeah, and also because there's the wire at the back as well. I've got a thing about wires and I've got to hide them. So obviously if you put taller plants at the back, it's going to hide the wire. Okay. This is a maiden hair fern. I love it because it's so delicate and it will just create a bit of texture in here. I can <laughs> probably make a right mess while I'm doing this. It's part of the fun though, right? Yeah, that's it. We run terrarium workshops in, in the main store and uh, uh, they're more traditional terrariums and we get charcoal and we get soil and we get gravel everywhere. It's, it's, it's great fun. Where is that? Uh, so we're in Allington Lane in Fair Oak. It's about five miles from here. So I'm using this peperomia, it's a, it's a bit big, so I'm just going to nip it back so I get the kind of look that I want for the composition. And obviously once it's in there it will start to kind of trail through and um, you know, then from a maintenance perspective we can keep it looking tidy and how we want it to grow really. This guy? Uh, yeah, it is. Yeah, it would be like a house plant. Just going to be placing some syngoniums in next. These are really easy to care for. They're not too fussy. They do like moist soil. You'll find that they'll droop if they're a bit thirsty, so. In here, mine never droop because they've always got the moisture from the soil, but the ones I've got in pots around my home, they do tend to droop quite often and I have to water them. So when you water them, they just respond to that? Yes, yeah, that's it. So if something in there droops when nothing else is, is it okay to pop some water in? You can water the plants individually if you need to. I do that with some of mine. You, it depends what you've got in there because some plants obviously like more uh, water than others, or if you're growing air plants in here, you can just mist them or you might be growing plants in sphagnum moss as well. So you can just mist the sphagnum moss. Where does all the plants come from? All the plants come from? Which ones? A lot of them come from the rainforests in South America, where it's nice and warm and humid. Unlike the UK, where it's, well, yeah. You could have this in a dark room and it, the plants would thrive. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So the, the, the idea that this is a full spectrum lighting in here and it simulates uh, kind of a proper sun cycle. So you have kind of a sunrise, a full day sun and a sunset period. So wherever you position this product, you get that full kind of like spectrum of sunlight. Um, Different house plants positioned in the home need different yeah. amounts of light, so depending on what they are and where you put them. Can you put some pets in there? Or like any living thing? There are certain things you can keep in here, yeah. Um, not a chameleon because it, a chameleon requires UV light and this doesn't provide UV light, but certain species of frog can go in here, certain insects, prey mantis, tarantulas, those sort of things. Um, dart frogs, some dart frogs do particularly well in this sort of environment. Um, so yeah. You can also put a clean-up crew of bugs in here, yeah, can't you? Great. Like springtails and isopods. Yeah, so these are like little microscopic animals which um, will live in the substrate. And you can pick them up from like pet centres or places that sell reptiles, or, you know, the kind of foods, or places that sell plants as well. We have them back at the main store and they'll just help keep the substrate clean and healthy. So they'll kind of go around, forage around the waste in the bottom. Quite tempted to get some for mine, actually. Yeah. It just helps prolong the life of the substrate, really. Is it possible to have it set up so you can have cacti in there, or is it just completely different from the... Because this one maintains the humidity at around 75%, it's going to get too wet for cacti, really, long term. So. Currently, we don't have an arid version, but it's something that we would like to see. 
was it set at one level all the time? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the mess is the fun part, right? This is a Talanzia, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is a Talanzia, yeah. So they're um, related to the air plants. Um, and they're awesome, they have these um, like amazing floors here, but they also bloom as well, these little white flowers. And this, this stem will last a really long time. And then after a period of time, it will kind of die off, you just chop it back, and then it will start to grow another one. Yeah, a bit like that, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you'll see that I'm kind of planting everything in threes because it's kind of that golden rule of gardening or floristry. You have that kind of um, three tends to look particularly good, especially in a, a round environment as well. So three with the fatinia, that small red plant at the bottom, three with these guys, and then I'll match it up with some other air plants as well, just from a composition perspective. How many days these plants survive? How many? Hopefully, if they're given the correct care, they should, they should keep on going and going and going. So, obviously, the maintenance, you'd have to trim stuff back as it gets a bit bigger. But other than that, this should provide the, you know, the excellent environment and everything they need, really, to grow. I'm going to be putting a Talansia cyanea in for my centrepiece, just because it's so beautiful. And it does flower as well. Yeah, this is... Yeah, it's really striking. Um, this is a bromeliad, but it's also an air plant, so you can either grow it in soil or as an air plant, so you can literally rinse off the soil um, and then just plant it in some sphagnum moss or just literally place it on top of the soil and just give it a mist now and again. I've got one in my bio-orb at home and I've also got one growing on the wall in my living room. What sort of um, care of air plants what do they need if they're outside of a... Just really high humidity and if they're outside of like a terrarium environment you can soak them in the summer maybe once a week or just mist the roots now and again. But do they ever actually, um, their roots there, do they ever actually attach themselves to the, the wood? Or they, they always just... I don't think they attach themselves to anything. Um, so you, normally people would mount them on like um, a plank of wood or hang them. Um, as you can see there's some air plants here hanging which they look really, they look really cool. So the one you have in your, in your home, which is not in the bio, yeah. how, how, what sort of care do you give that? Not much, to be okay. honest, no. Um, but it is a bit annoying because I have to keep taking it out of its little, it's in like a bamboo planter and I have to take, keep taking it out of its bamboo planter to soak the roots and then put it back. Whereas with this one, you just put it in and that's it, you'd have to do anything with it. Also with bromeliads, um, the mother plant, once it has flowered and died back, they will produce pups. So you can propagate those pups, take them off, and then you get lots of new plants. So even though it's quite sad that the mother plant dies, you get lots of babies from it. So you can have a never ending supply of air plants. My air plant died, but I can't bring it back to life, can I? It's just like... How bad is it? Yeah, bad. <laughs> oh, yeah, you might have to get another one. <laughs> they get a bit too dry. Yeah, they can get a bit, yeah. bit parched. Yeah. So I'm just using this moss now just to dress around the top, around the back area of these, the planting, just to kind of contain the soil. Um, but also kind of contain the planting a bit to a degree, so it'll help keep everything where I want it to go. Um, otherwise, things will get a bit wild over time. As well, yeah, absolutely, yeah. So it keeps the soil contained, it helps with moisture, and just dresses it a bit more as well. Can you put a, a small Venus fly trap? You well? can, yeah. Do you think we should put one in here? Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Like this. And that'll be all right, isn't it? Because there won't be any flies. There won't be any flies, but you can put fruit flies in. So this has a sealed top, 
So where you can get the springtails from, you can also get fruit flies in there as well, and that will feed it. They don't necessarily need to eat um, insects as well. They'll also, they also they they function like a normal plant as well. So. So they survive, they survive without the flies? Yes, yeah, yeah. How much does the biobs cost? Uh, so the complete terrarium is 349 and that comes with everything you need in the kit other than the plants and decoration. Is this the only size you think they do at the minute? Currently, yeah. And it's available in white or grey. How's this looking, by the way, from the front? Because obviously I'm planting it from the back, so I haven't got a clue what it looks like. How have you noticed the flytrap went black and died? Okay. Um, any tips? <laughs> That's probably because everyone was too tempted to put their fingers in. Yeah, so what happens is it thinks it's caught something, it starts to ingest it, there's nothing there, so it starts to ingest itself. And that's what causes them to die. So it's as, much, as tempting as it is, it's best not to. Yeah, and actually putting some food in there, try not to poke them. This is a really nice and healthy one. So if you gave it too much food, will it die as well? It's, um, well, it will decide whether it needs to eat it or not. But it's that kind of prodding which causes it to close. It's that kind of automatic reaction. And then it will, it thinks it has something in there, so it starts to ingest, you see. And that's, I that's that each trap will only close five or six times in its life. And then it's finished, yeah, and it starts to produce another one, yeah. Yeah. Do you keep carnivorous plants, Hannah? No. No? No. No experience. Okay, I, I, need, to, I need to send you on 15. your way with some. <laughs> you can make us a YouTube video about them. I'm just putting some Fetonia in also known as the nerve plant. These are really beautiful, obviously adds a pop of colour to any terrarium. And also the brighter light it gets, the more vibrant the colours are, which, wow, well, they look, yeah, they look so beautiful. I've got loads of Fetonia. But they're, again, they're quite hard to keep out of a terrarium um, because they require really high humidity. They can go quite crispy quite easily. And they're also very thirsty plants, so I found myself having to water them like every, probably about every two or three days, especially during the summer. So a lot of mine have ended up in my bio bear now. But if they're in the right conditions, they're really easy to propagate, aren't they? You just nip them yeah, out, like. really easy. Yeah. yeah, if they get a bit leggy, you just have to um, snip them back, and then they produce new leaves from where you've cut them. You can propagate them in water or soil, but I found water to be a bit better than the soil. Do any of the plants flower? Um, the Tillandsia cyanea will flower. Um, Is that a little one you've got? That won't flower. No, these don't flower, I don't think. Do they flower? <laughs> so I'm using this ball moss now, which is like one of my favourite things I use in everything. Um, just because it gives you those kind of more kind of natural textures and a bit more shape and that kind of vivid green colour. So it just makes everything look a little bit more interesting. And you can just like nestle it in amongst amongst the plants. Can you just use the moss that you get out of the garden or is that not happening? You can do. The 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 challenge with that is obviously you risk introducing other things, yeah. So that would be the only thing you'd have to watch really. <laughs> do you ever get any um, plants that suffer from Obviously, when they're kept out in shops and stuff, they're not in the same humidity as what the other will be in there. Do, do you ever get any like um, any mountain of the leaves or anything from there? Yeah. I'm yeah, unfortunately, there is always that element, especially when stuff's transported. A lot of the stuff comes from Europe. It comes from refrigerated you know, vehicles and stuff to keep it fresh. So some stuff does suffer. Um, so you know, my team do their best to kind of, you know give them the best care and get them, you know, in the best conditions, really. Um, but it, often it's about, you know, a bit of recovery on some of the plants, taking off any damaged leaves and stuff, and then focusing on the care to get all the new growth through. Are some more prone than others? Yeah, it's, yeah, absolutely, depending on, you know, time of year and the type of plants. So, um, yeah, and the, the type of care, really. You yeah, know, certain things, certain factors can make such a difference, like, uh, you yeah, know, if we have lots of hot weather or, you know, the quality of the water used and and also just transportation. <laughs> Any more questions from anyone? Uh, 
Um, yeah, with the top reservoir of water, did you put fertiliser in that so it'd give like, everything a foliar feed? Or I think it would be better just to mist your plants inside the orb um, and add the fertiliser, but just make sure it's diluted by half as well so it's not too strong. That's what I do with mine anyway. Again, you just want to be a little bit careful of the surface of the bowl as well. Um, we don't want anything misting around there and causing any, anything to kind of build up on the surface. So it's best to kind of target spray stuff. You have to clean that anyway. Um, if you use the filtered water, you shouldn't have to. Um, the, the, the main issue is um, a build up of scale if you don't use the filtered water. So um, that's, that's the key thing, really. You can do, yeah, yeah. Um, put plants from the rain, that, that's from the rainforest. Can you build other plants as well? You can put other plants as long as they will uh, withstand the humidity. So okay. that's that's the key thing. Really fascinating to see how things how things do. Like Hannah said, this, she has some difficult plants where they've been difficult to establish, and then just trying them in the terrarium, it's really worked for her, you know. I did put an anthurium. Clarinarium in mine and it literally outgrew the biorb in about a month so I'd stick to smaller more compact plants um, plants you can prune back but that literally grew up to the the roof so I took it out but it's actually overgrown my other anthurium which I've had growing out of the biorb which is like half the size which is really interesting I think it's because it started off in the correct conditions yeah I think that so the boost. humidity and yeah. the light it just loved it no, it's fine. No, it's all right. Yeah, it's doing well. It's in my office now. I replaced it with um, an Alocasia bambino, which is like a miniature, if you know the Alocasia poly, Amazonica, it's like a little miniature version of that. So that's not going to outgrow. What, like that size or even smaller? It's like that, but it's the, light, the leaves are tiny. They're like this big, really small. It's really cute. Because again, the alocasia amazonica can get quite big. Do you have like a really, do you have a, is that the thing you have that's massive, the, the really big leaves on it? Oh, um, I think, are you referring to the philodendron melanochrysum? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, I mean, it's only got small leaves at the moment, but they can get to like taller than me, basically, which I'm hoping for one day. <laughs> it's, it's not hard. But again, they need ideal conditions, very high humidity, warmth. It's a shame I can't put that in the, the bio. You need a bigger one. Yeah. Can you put orchids and flowers? Yeah, orchids do really yeah. well. I, I collect jewel orchids as well. And I've got about, I counted them this morning, I think I've got eight in there now because they've all multiplied. I think originally I had three or four and now I've got eight. So they're doing extremely well. Uh, that one of them has flowered, yeah. Have you ever done these setups of um, the plants you use are only from one area only, like one country? Like a biotope <laughs> style. Um, I have uh, with the air, but uh, yeah, we have in other countries. Um, and it's finding stuff, and it's always a bit of a challenge finding the range of plants, especially in the UK. Um, but yeah, there are a few specialist plant suppliers that you can get stuff, so you can do things which are all from one kind of biotope. Um, but yeah, it'll be cool to do um, you know, real kind of specific areas. What sort of plants do you keep? Um, pretty much nothing really. Yeah. Okay. I, I, um, I'm a fish keeper, so okay. all, my, all my plants are aquatic. Okay, cool. Other than the garden stuff. So yeah, yeah. Inside, nothing. I guess the, the process is similar from aquascaping to the kind of scaping of this sort of thing. I love that Talansia. These guys are really cool, yeah. all of those. Yeah, and as those white flowers start to open up, it should be... Uh, really pretty. I would like this one to be a little bit more stood up, but, you know. 
might be taking one of those home as well, I think. <laughs> So do you have a limit of how many plants you can have, Hannah, or you're just going to keep going until you have your own jungle? I think I'll just keep going. The house is slowly turning into a, a jungle, but I've got a lot of tropical decor as well, so it just fits in really well. I love it. Feels like I'm on holiday. I even do um, tropical themed Christmas decorations now as well, just to fit in with the plants. <laughs> So I'm just finishing off with these uh, Talanzi, these air plants. I'm just kind of perching them on the top because these guys will, um, they'll take the nutrients from the air and also they'll, they'll like the misting as well. And they don't really need to be planted into the soil. You have to be a little bit careful they don't get too wet on the bottom because they can rot away a bit. So that's why I'm just trying to choose to poke them on top of the moss or on top of the decor. Um, so hopefully they'll, they'll like that environment. I'm just clearing off any damaged leaves at the bottom. Just they look a bit tidier really. Doesn't air plants like, go mostly dry? Yes, yeah, they like it dry, um, but they do also like that periodic misting, so they do quite well in here. Another thing I love about my bio bear is that I can keep lots of poisonous plants inside it because I've got birds, pet birds, and obviously I can't have poisonous plants in my living room. So my living room mainly consists of calatheas because they're pet friendly. So it's really nice to have a little bubble of toxic plants that look absolutely stunning, rare plants. And yeah, I'm always staring, just sitting on my uh, sofa and staring at the bio orb. Uh, whilst I should be working or something. I love it. Even my birds look into it as well. Especially when I'm filling up the water reservoir, they watch me, which is really cute. Oh my gosh, there's thousands now. It's thousands. It's become quite a community spot for <laughs> The best thing to do is just type in your favourite plants and then just see what pictures come up and then follow those people. That's what I do anyway. Would you say there's any trends at the moment, particular plants that people are into? Or? Philodendrons are really popular at the moment. Um, yeah, I'd say they're the most popular plant. Like the pink princess and the melanochrysum, all like the rare philodendrons. I don't have a pink princess yet, but I'm hoping to get one soon. That would be another one actually, it would be amazing to keep in here. Because to keep the variegation nice, it needs bright light and humidity. They get quite big though, right? They can get quite big, but they're very slow growing. Okay. So I think it would be fine in here. And then you could always um, propagate it as well. So I'm going to add the water into here now. I find it really sat satisfying filling up the water tank. Yeah. Like at home, I don't know, just really enjoy it. And you have to try and get it around the whole... Yeah, so basically it will work its way through the capillary matting and once the fans start and we kind of build up that uh, mini environment and it starts to mist and fog, you'll get that kind of... Um, it's like a natural, it's like, almost like a mini world. So it will soak around the compost and then the, the fog will almost rain on the plants. So. But when you first put it in, do you need to go all the way through? No, no, no it, will just, it will just work its way through, yeah. You can just check the, um, the water level indicator here. So what are you going to do with these two? 
These are going to, I think the plan is for these to go to, um, there's an international pet show um, in November. So the plan is that they'll go back to the office and they'll, uh, they'll look after them and then they'll be on display there. So, um, escape by me and Hannah, so, yeah. <laughs> so it comes with this little spray bottle as well, so you can use it just to kind of give the plants a mist, initial misting and also get any kind of soil and stuff off. Um. Oh. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we've now filled this the reservoir up. So this reservoir has a special mister in here, we fill it with water and uh, it monitors the humidity and as the humidity drops it creates a fog in here which is then um, processed down by the fan and it's kind of, you'll see in a minute, it fogs down through the product. So it's amazing, it gets a kind of rainforest fogging effect which is really quite cool. Um, there's also like a carbon filter in the top as well, so it filters the air going in. So it is really its own kind of enclosed environment. Uh, so part of the design team, um, the, main, the main concept came from a guy called Barry Reynolds who designed the, the concept of the terrarium. Um, we have worked on it for a long time. Um, yeah, it was a bit of a labour of love, but um, it's such a cool product. And how long have they been around for? Uh, a couple of years, yeah, yeah. So is it just one plug? Yes, one plug, plug and play. The, the one plug controls everything from the, the mister, it's part of the whole bio brand ethos, is it's all kind of plug and play, simple to use. Uh, it controls the mist, the humidity, the lighting, and everything's kind of preset. So you just fill it up, set it up, switch it on, and it, there it goes. There is quite a cool little feature button, so you can, um, if you want to see it mist, you can do that, um, which we'll show you in a sec. See the hand? Yeah. <laughs> Show in November. They can, these ones will be at a, yeah. Um, hopefully, well, they'll, they'll reflower by then. If not, I'll be reworking them. But this one um, has been set up in store for over a year. So um, the guys just give it a bit of a tweak every now and then. Let's watch that cable, Hannah. The store was higher than it was for a second. So, if you go on a holiday for like a week or yeah. two, is it going to be okay? It's going to be absolutely fine, yeah. You just make sure that you have enough water in here, you check the water level here, you fill up the tank here, and um, just give everything a good spray before you go, and there should be plenty of water in there to keep it going. And then, you yeah, know, if you've got somebody coming in checking stuff again, as I said, you'll, you'll see the lights pulsate if it needs topping up, and it's just really simple. You just lift this lid up, top up with a bit of water, and you're away. Hannah's a perfectionist with the microfiber cloth. Oh, I'm, I'm always polishing mine. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, it's a kind of 24 hour cycle. So you set it in the morning and then it'll, you'll come through like a sunrise setting and then it'll stay on throughout the day and then it'll, it'll fade out at night. Can you override it if you want to? There is an override. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You've got people around, you want to put it on, you want to show the fog yeah. and make it cool. Yeah, 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 for sure. So is that suitable for pretty much every plant you would ever use or is there some that prefer? Yeah, I mean. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah.
Okay. What would you say the, like the, the cost of the plants that you use? On this one, um, you're probably looking around 60 to 70 pounds worth of plants. Yeah. Hannah's one's a bit more premium. Hers is, uh, yeah. Um, probably around 100 pounds worth of plants because of the bigger stuff, the more unusual stuff. Yeah, so you can see the fogging now. So basically it's monitoring the humidity and then it's, um, it's adding the fog. It's really cool, it has that kind of jungle effect, you know. <laughs> I love how you just place the air plants on the deck. Yeah, so just so that they kind of, you know, they don't get any kind of rotting on the base and it, um, it just allows you to keep that sort of plant in there. Just adds a different texture as well. Will any of that moss try and at all. It shouldn't do. Um, the the key thing is to kind of push it down. It, I mean, it will spread out a bit over time, but um, yeah, it shouldn't come up around, around the top too much. So it should be uh, should be pretty good. But again, you know, just get in there with some scissors. We do like a tool kit as well, so you can kind of there's some tweezers because I've got really big hands. And sometimes I find it a bit of a struggle trying to get in there. Tweezers, little scissors, and a little kind of um, shovel set. You can kind of move everything around and tidy it up. So you say about maybe doing different sizes in the future, you think about maybe doing something a bit smaller? It'd be nice to see something smaller, it'd be nice to see something bigger. Yeah, it's, um, I think the consideration has to be the size of the plants and also if it's smaller, you have to think about what you can get in there. Yeah. If it's bigger, it's got fit for people's doors as well. So um, this is kind of like the optimum size really. But, um, so many sort of like dwarf species that you could use? Or yeah, absolutely. There are smaller species of plants. They're more difficult to get hold of and their cares are, yeah, there's more care required. So things like the jewel orchids, are, yeah. And they're beautiful. They're so tiny and like, it's a perfect environment for them. So if there was a smaller product, they would look great in that. Yeah. Sell them here, the the jewel orchids? Oh, the tank? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have them, we have them available. Yeah. Cool. That's great, Hannah. Yeah, yeah thank you very much. Cool. Yeah. It is like the work of art, really, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. They're great fun. They're like mini worlds. That's what I love about them. You can walk around it 360, you get a different view from it. And, uh, yeah, it's like a fish tank in a way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, and also, you know, if some, especially in a very urban environment as well, or if people have conditions which aren't great for plants. These are great for uh, creating, yeah, absolutely, like you said, with, yeah, yeah, so yeah. Do you ever find that you put a plant in and then you want to change it because you found something a bit more? Oh, I always change my plants around, yes, That's yeah. They don't mind. No, no, they're fine. They don't have a choice. No, they don't have a choice. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So how long will that be missing? Does it just do periods? So it depends on the humidity. So it, it, yeah, so it's, it's measuring the humidity now. Um, it's missing quite a bit. It's probably because we're still a bit dry in there um, because we had everything out here and it's quite a windy environment as well. Um, but as it gets to the, the optimum humidity, it will stop. But yeah, there is... Yes, yes, yes. There's a fan in here which is circulating the air and it's drawing it through. And that's, there's a carbon filter in here. So in this top part here, is this... Well, this is to, to a degree, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but usually at room temperature, it's fine, yeah. The plants love the heat, though, so if it's hot, Yeah, absolutely, and, and all you find is if it's more hot and arid, the, the actual, the, the, to maintain the humidity, it mists more frequently. So. And what comes in the pack? So basically, you get everything apart from the plants and decoration. So you get the bowl, the lighting system, the fogging system, the filtration, um, the reservoir, the coir compost, uh, so everything you need. All you need to add is your choice of plants and any decoration. It also comes with the water, the filtered water as well. Yeah, enough to get you started. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then you can buy the accessories online or in stores. We sell them in our stores. And what could you do that's like, really modern in terms of, um, instead of like the logging? Natural thing, yeah. There's loads of cool things you can do. Um, so within the range of some of my other products are much more contemporary. 
Um, so you can get really creative with what you use in there. Um, more decorative pieces. We've seen people use, um, you know, uh, little figures and stuff, create all sorts of, yeah, yeah, that sort of thing. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, crystals are really cool. Um, so yeah, you can, you know, as long as you can get it in the top, and as long as it's kind of inert, it's not going to affect the environment, there's no reason why you can't put it in there. So you can get really creative. How much was the big rock that you put in? The rock pieces? Oh, yeah, yeah, I think <laughs> <laughs> they're around 35 pounds. Yeah. It's, it's made from resin. Yeah, yeah, so it's totally inert, it's poly resin, yeah. Yeah, it looks like resin, but could you put a wood in? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Things you get it from fish tanks. Yeah, that's it, yep. Yeah. And things like fur cones would probably look quite nice. Um, yeah, things like fur cones are great. Yeah. But you can get those little pearls as well. Mm. Yes, yeah, yeah, anything like that. It's quite funky. Mm, yeah, yeah. That would look nice. Christmas Absolutely, them. yeah. You can make it really seasonal yeah. as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For Christmas. I didn't think about that.